I was a pretty contrary student. Um, I, you know, I had a keen sense of um, social justice uh, as an undergraduate, and um, if um, if I felt that you know courses were you know structured in a way that wasn't conducive to learning, I made sure to let my profs know. And um, um, yeah, I mean, I was I was a good student, but I didn't always follow follow the rules. <laughs> I think I needed to find and eventually did find uh, a mentor that I, um, you know, that um, that I could see eye to eye with and, and who I felt was uh, was really worth my, uh, the level of commitment that I wanted to, to, to put into uh, to my studies. Uh, I, I'm a political philosopher, um, although I, I also work in moral philosophy. Um, um, I'm primarily interested in issues of um, of social justice. Um, uh, currently I work on issues in global justice, particularly issues of global inequality and poverty. Um, and so, it, you, you know, you, you might be surprised to find a philosopher working on those issues. You'd be more likely to hear of a, an economist working on those issues. But, um, but um, my particular perspective is, um, is, uh, is a conceptual and philosophical one. I don't I, I don't think that economists alone um, should be charged with um, working out issues of global poverty because there's um, there's so many there's so many conceptual and normative questions that um, that arise when we think about global inequalities, um, you know, moral problems that arise when we think about global inequalities, and I think philosophers are actually very well placed to take those issues up. So so my issue centers on on those issues of global justice. A current uh, problem that I've been writing on is the way that the poor, the global poor, um, as they're known in, 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 in the literature, um, are conceptualized, whether they're seen as uh, potential moral and political agents uh, for, um, for helping to eradicate poverty, um, or whether, um, as is unfortunately often the case, um, whether they are seen as passive recipients of humanitarian assistance and development aid. And I'm trying to make the argument uh, that they are already um, active political agents, and that if we open our eyes and see the kind of um, the kind of work that pro-poor organizations, so the organizations of poor people and movements of poor people in the developing world, if we if we just uh, recognize that work, we'll we'll see uh, very clearly that they are moral and political agents of change. M my focus is on the empowerment of the global poor rather than their disempowerment. So it ends up being quite inspirational in many ways. They know their needs better than uh, you know, somebody sitting in the WTO, the World Trade Organization, that they have to be a part of the process. There really is no coherent anti-poverty strategy that can be devised without the active participation of the poor. In, in order to create a better planet, we need to think pretty deeply and I would also say philosophically about the world that we want to, to create. We also need to think about the best means for reaching that, not just instrumentally, but what is the process? Do we want it to be a top-down process where you know, the World Trade Organization, the IMF, the World Bank, and so on uh, negotiate new policies, or do we want it to be a process where where, uh, where uh, people themselves are, are engaged in, in seeking and advocating for the kinds of changes they want to see. I would say the latter. Uh, I would say, what would I say to students now? Make a difference. Your, your, your life goes by so quickly. You want to be able to look back and say, I left the world a better place.